Today you see a beautiful neat dress that can be both for summer or winter, it just depends on what sleeve you put in there. It's got the most interesting bodice with lots of micro pleats and a V neckline that doesn't need a V neckband. Super easy to sew and I'm showing you exactly how to do it. Sneak peek, nice print ITY. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And if you watched the previous video, I mentioned I was going to have another one very soon and here I am filming again. And this video Video is all about the Yasmin dress from Sinclair Patterns. It's a dress I have mentioned many times in the past that I had intentions of sewing it, that I like the style. I even mentioned it in a video I made recently about 10 knit dresses I would sew today and it was included in there and I've actually made it come true with the exact fabric I had paired it with which is not very common because sometimes I change my mind but I did follow through on what I had thought I wanted to do and I kept the idea in my mind and nothing changed and I made it and I'm very happy to share. I have mentioned before that Sinclair has a group of patterns that every week are 20% off. Pattern changes every Monday morning. So if you go to the website pretty early on Monday, you'll see the new patterns there. It'll basically run all through Sunday night till the dawn early hours of Monday and if you click there on the website where it says specials you see the ones that are on sale this week and one of those is the Yasmin dress. There are two tank tops there that I also want to sew that I really like. One is called the Rio tank and it's got a really nice yoke feature, nicely shaped, I love that. The other one's called the Senna and I think that one even has a shelf bra. I'm very interested in getting to sew those two as well, I eventually will. But those are other ones that I like that are also on sale this week for 20% off. I will leave you my affiliate link down below as always if you like this dress, you like the style and you want to make it for yourself. I would really appreciate if you used my affiliate link to purchase your pattern. It doesn't cost you anything extra and that is one way I make an income by making free content on YouTube. The Yasmin dress is for knit fabrics and it's got a really really unique style. It's not just a simple knit sew, there's a lot of detail and a lot of thought gone into the process of sewing it. And the way the pattern was drafted is just brilliant. <laughs> As you can see in the liner, the bodice has a lot of features there. It's a pretty short bodice that finishes under the bust, but not straight across. You can see it's shorter in the center front and goes longer on the sides. And underneath that short bodice that is Empire, you have a quite wide sort of shaped waist piece before you get onto the skirt that comes below. Now that waist piece is also at the back so the bodice at the back will also be shorter and you have these tiny micro pleats just under the bust. They are so small they're actually the tiniest pleats I've ever sewn and you also have these micro pleats here on the shoulders. The V neckline is super fun to construct. You don't need a neckband. There is a center front seam and a type of facing that gets folded to the inside and also encloses this area of the shoulder super fun to sew. Now that waistband piece inside is cut double so that that seam is also enclosed. You can choose two skirt options and there are separate pieces for them. One is a gathered skirt around the bodice and the other one is not gathered. It's just A-lined and the waist will match the bodice waist. I've decided to go with the gathered skirt. You can make the skirt many lengths up to a maxi and also for sleeves you can use a sleeveless cut line or add a short sleeve, a long sleeve, several sleeve lengths. So whatever fabric you choose, this dress could work for you or year, it just depends on how you sew it. I'm sure you're guessing which is the way I wanted to sew mine. Of course I wanted to sew mine sleeveless, but I didn't cut at the sleeveless cut line. I just cut the regular armhole that would have a sleeve and use that one because I just like more cover. You need light to medium weight fabric that stretches 50% horizontally and 20% vertically. And in the instructions, I love that because the designer recommends her first choice what she thinks would work best and those are the lightweight knits and then on the second choice she mentions other fabrics that could also work but would just have a different effect a different look and so for the lightweight fabrics you have your typical lightweight knits like ity double brush poly rayon spandex modal bamboo spandex all those types of knits and as a second choice you can choose slightly more structured fabrics they are just going to stand out and poke out a little bit more like 
cotton spandex french terry one fabric i would not touch for this is ponty roma it's just way too thick those micro pleats are going to be extremely bulky it's just not going to look good especially if you want to do the gathered skirt those gathers there just yeah just stay away from ponty roma it's just not the best fabric i've chosen ity for mine and that's why i thought the gathered skirt would be amazing you know with ity anything that's gathered is just really subtle and plus in the design the gathers aren't that much either <laughs> And because I'm using ITY, I've decided to partially line that bodice and have two layers at the back. That meant that I was able to do a little bit of change in the construction to make good use of these layers and have a nicer, cleaner, finished look. If you're making your dress with a lightweight knit, like it's recommended, the pattern also suggests that you cut the inner waistband layer out of something more structured, like a cotton lycra. That's what I've done, and it's just to give that area of the dress support to hold that skirt as well, it could get pretty heavy. So. I've cut my outer layer of that waist piece out of ITY, my main fabric, and the inner layer, you'll see it in the sewing segment that is cut out of a cotton lycra, which is heavier, and it's just going to help this dress hold up very, very well. This is an older pattern, so the size range goes up to a size 22 US. The newer patterns go up to a size 30. So for this one, the upper hip measurement is 54 and a half inches. There are, of course, the height files which are gold you choose first the file according to your height petite regular or tall after you have that file then you print out your size based on your body measurements i've been sewing a size 16 tall file for all the last projects i've made and i've had great results i haven't needed to do many fitting adjustments at all now this is a fitted bodice you will find negative ease at the bust and the waist but you have a lot of nice ease at the hips because the skirt, it's not a full, full skirt, but it's not a fitted skirt. And the end of the bodice, including that waist piece, should hit the waist. Because it's hard to do flat pattern measurements with knits, especially because you can't really account for that vertical stretch, I did make a muslin. So I have a really horrible red polyester knit fabric that I'm using for muslins, and it's been so, so good to make them. I made a red bodice, and I'll show you some pictures here. I was happy with the fit at the front. I mainly wanted to check that the upper bodice piece was actually underneath my bust and then it wasn't slicing my bust like up here because that's not a good look. I also did not want it to be too below my bust. I wanted it to be right below my bust. I think that's the correct fit. And it was perfect like that, you know, the waist piece, the end of it was hitting my waist, but it was a little extra long at the back. Basic fitting adjustment I made at the back was just draw a line across the back piece and take a wedge of half an inch of the center back tapering to nothing at the side seam correcting that center back so it's straight and on the grain line again because it does get a little distorted but nothing that you can't fix that was mainly the only fitting adjustment that i made and the other one is just for personal preference it's not a fitting adjustment as such and it's just to raise that armhole by an inch you've seen me do that before and i know i want it sleeveless and i know i want a really really good covered armhole with basically just my arms coming out i never want any of the skin to show around there you know let's get into the sewing you'll see exactly how to sew this bodice with extra steps included a little change on how to finish the back neckline how i'm going to enclose the side seams overall it's going to be a beautiful bodice inside and out super neat i'm focusing on the bodice because i'm sure you can gather your skirt in there without needing to see me do it so it's all about the bodice let's see These are the two front pieces for the bodice, the ones that go above the waist that will go under here and they are mirrored and you can see this weird shape here with this V. This will be like a facing for the V neckline which will make it so easy to sew. Now at the bottom here of this area there are tiny tiny pleats, micro pleats. Same as on the shoulder up there as well, tiny tiny pleats. So I've decided to fold my pleats looking to the side seam. So I want the bulk of the pleats going this way. I don't want them going this way. Okay, maybe you can see these little folds. They're going all that way. I think I always like pleats going out like that instead of coming into the center. And I've got the same here on the top, like that. They're all going that way. These pleats have been hand basted. So much easier to sew and to control it. And it's such a tiny small area and the pleats are so small 
it's easier to do it by hand and doing it on the machine where you have the risk of stretching out these tiny pleats. So I've just basted these pleats on by hand, both at the shoulder seam and down below. I've got this one to do and this is the right side of the fabric but I'll be making the pleats from the wrong side of the fabric because that's where I drew all the dots. I don't want to stay in this part. So I want my pleats to go this way, that way, right? So I'll just form a pleat here, just hold it there so I can know what I'm doing with the dots over here. So I know from the wrong side I'm bringing the fold of the pleat this way on the wrong side of the fabric. So I have a series of dots here at the bottom. So I've got my bodice piece upside down now. I have the waist part up here and the shoulders are down here. Over here you'll see lots and lots of dots, 10 dots. And those will form five micro pleats. So I'm going to take the first dot here. This is a side seam as reference. And that first dot is going to meet the next dot, the second dot. And you can see it's going to form the smallest pleat ever. And I'm just going to put a pin there. Then I'm going to take the next dot and join it to this dot here. Bringing this dot to meet that dot there. It can be a little bit fiddly. <laughs> and then so on and so forth until we have the five pleats done. Okay, and there they are all pinned. I'm going to leave that ready to just hand base there right on the edge. The seam allowance for the dress is only a quarter of an inch. So what you base needs to be super on the edge actually. We have the facing here. Part of this is a facing and there's a line here where this is going to be folded in later like that. So after that line, you also find 10 dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And they will also form five micro pleats. Now doing the same thing I was doing up there on the waist where I was taking the pleat and folding it this way towards the facing. I'm going to do the same here down there. I'm going to find the first dot there and meet it to the next dot. Now this has been true to the shoulder seam that has a slant so it will make sense. Then the next dot is going to meet the next dot. Okay there we go five micro pleats. From the wrong side of the fabric, the fold is going towards this facing part from the neckline. Here is the armhole. So going towards the facing, going away from the armhole. And that's the same thing I've done on this other piece, only mirrored. It's the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and base these. And I'll show you what happens on the back piece. This is the center back here. And you can see four dots there and then four dots there. This is where the fold line was. So on your pattern, you have the edge of the paper and then four little dots. Again, these pleats will be tiny <laughs> and I'm going to bring the first dot there and bring it towards the second dot right there and you'll form two little pleats and I mean these pleats are the tiniest pleats you've ever made. They're very small. So from the wrong side of the fabric, here's the side seam. I'm folding the pleats this way and now on the pleats that are going to be on the other side, I'm going to do it in the opposite direction. So I'm folding these pleats. I'm actually just folding them towards the center. Okay, so that's the center back. I'll show you how it's going to look on the right side. Again, I've got the bulk of the pleats going towards the side seams like that. It's hard to see because it's so small. <laughs> but it's a nice little detail at the back. Here I have all the pieces for the bodice of the Yasmin dress. And you've already seen me do the tiny micro pleats on the back. That's why that looks like that. I have cut another layer of the back so that the back is double layered. Now for that lining layer, I'm not going to do the pleats. I'm just going to gather that excess there on the inside. It's going to be way easier. These are the two front bodice pieces. This section that you see with that shape is going to be the facing that will form the V neckline. Here at the bottom you have those pleats and on the shoulders you have pleats also. For both of the layers it's the same. And these are the two bands that go between the bodice and then the skirt. So this is the front one, you can see it has a shape that goes up higher in the center and then slants down. This straighter edge is what will go onto the skirt. And you're meant to cut two layers. Because this is ITY and, and very lightweight, I cut my inner layer out of a heavier cotton spandex just to give that waist band area a little bit more structure. And I've done the same with the back one. The back one also has a curve here. So it's not a straight. Because this back waistband area also curves up like that to the center, it's higher there. You can see the shape of the bodice also has that curve like that. Everything's going to match super well and I've also got the inner layer kind of cotton spandex. Another thing I'm going to be doing different is how to finish the neckline of the back. If you were just doing a single layer, 
you would do a binding right here on the back and fold it in and then your back neckline would be finished separately but because I'm going to do two layers of the back I'm just going to place them right sides together I'm going to use a slightly narrower than a quarter of an inch elastic and I'm going to put it along the neckline there while I sew these together then flip it to the other side and I'm going to have a really clean edge on the back without needing to do the binding and I'm going to put the elastic in there to keep it from stretching out so the elastic will be the same size as this, it won't be smaller or larger and it will just keep that shape there without it gaping and stretching out. I wouldn't want to just sew this directly and flip it, you know this is pretty flimsy, you don't have a gaping back neckline if you do that. And if you were doing the binding, you would find that the binding is slightly shorter than this and that's what keeps it close to the neck, close to the body at the back. It does need something to bring it in, you know. These are my two back pieces, right sides together. Remember I'm doing a double layer for the back, just to add more stability and structure because this is very thin ITY and I have aligned both necklines together. Cut very narrow elastic and I've just basted it on the edge so it doesn't go anywhere. There's no way I could just pin it and serge it or else the elastic would just start moving everywhere. So it's really little. When I catch this, the seam allowance will actually catch all that elastic and it will give this neckline that structure so it doesn't start stretching out and gaping all the time. So after that surge, then I could just flip this and I'll just have a really clean neckline like that without needing to bind it. The original pattern has you bind the neckline if you're just doing a single layer. But because I have two, I might as well finish it nicely like this. So that's how that looks, the elastic is in there and it will keep this nice and stable. I flipped the neckline and now I have the fabric strong sides together, I've aligned them on the edges and pinned them and now I'm top stitching this with a quarter inch presser foot using a shallow zigzag. It does look like a straight stitch and it's going to keep the two layers together without anything moving on the top and it's going to be nice and stable and not gape over time. Now these shoulder seams, I'm just going to pin them together for now and pretend it's just one layer I have now. That's all I'm going to do with the back, pretend it's just one layer, but it's actually two. This is the front bodice and maybe you can see the red outline of my friction pen where I've drawn the seam allowance. Seam allowance for everything is a quarter of an inch, but for this specific area, it's five eighths of an inch. And it's marked on the pattern piece. So I have a red line there, there's that little corner, and then down there. So this is something that I'll sew, pivot, and then go down. And this will be the center front seam there. Now these two edges, these two long edges need to be surged beforehand, before sewing this. I don't like trying to serge this as well because I really can't serge corners really well. I always end up cutting away fabric that I don't want to cut. So all I'm going to serge before sewing this shape is this long end there. So that it's nice and neat, it will be the inner edge of the facing. After I've sewn that, then I'm going to serge what I can separately because then after sewing you need to snip into there. So that's what I'm going to do at the sewing machine. This is the front bodice, here is the shoulder seam and this is the front facing there. Up here you can see there's a line and this is where the facing will be folded like this afterwards. But as I said I was going to serge these long edges and I have, I've serged them separately of course. And I have the pins marking where I need to sew this exactly there and pivot right, right there. So I'm going to sew this with a straight stitch. Now that that seam is sewn and I've snipped into that corner, I'm going to show you how this actually comes together. Open this up, keeping the pointy bit here on the top like that. What you see here is going to be the center front and this I want to leave it open like that so it's nice and neat. Now these are two edges I want to serge now that I've already sewn it because I have access with my serger. So I'll just pick it up on both sides and clean that up. 
you know in essence this won't fray you don't have to surge it but I can't cope with raw edges inside I just couldn't I just can't <laughs> and now this little one here this one won't be seen this one will also be open like this this little one will go right on top there and will become a facing of the V neckline so you can see the V neckline forming right there and it's a really crisp V so what's inside here won't be seen at all and it will be on top of this edge so I don't think you need to surge this as I said it won't fray and no one will see it so I'm going to leave that raw but I am going to surge these two edges of the center front now I left a bit of long tails of overlocking thread there so I can tuck those in so it's nice and neat so I'm just going to thread them through a large needle and just tuck those tails back in there to keep it neat this is how the center front looks while it's been tidied up the center front seam is pressed open now here at the bottom I didn't sew all the way down to the edge I left a quarter of an inch unsewn and that's got to do with how I'm going to sew on the waistband afterwards so that's done that's been folded back I've actually hand tacked that little V there on the seam allowance so it doesn't move anywhere and the neckline is very clean I'll just move this down a little bit this is my back piece that's the neckline I have two sides here one that is the right side that's the one that has the pleats and the wrong side of my lining doesn't have the pleats so that's how I know I'm going to put the layer that's going to be on the outside facing up like that and then I'm going to take my front like this and this is the shoulder seam here that has the tiny pleats as well I'm going to align this on the edge of the back right here and I have pins holding the two layers together I'm just going to use those same pins to pin this and remember there was a line here that marked where the facing area was going to start so this edge of the back neckline should match that edge there and it does I'm just going to put a pin there so just align this pleated area with the back and now this leftover bit of the facing is going to wrap around like this over to the other side right there and this is how it's going to be finished it's going to be super neat here I have the back shoulder sandwiched between two layers here the front with the pleats and the bit that wraps around like that and I'll do the same on this other side so there's my line that marks where the facing starts that's got to align with the edge of the neckline of the back got to align with the back neckline there put a pin wrap this around and just align everything pin it there on the top okay so these are the seams that I'm going to serge now now before I serge them I think because there's just too many layers here and this is slippery fabric I'm just going to give it a quick hand baste it'll take no time at all and then I'll be happy to serge this okay I've just serged that this is the neckline part and I just tucked the tails of the overlock locking thread in there so they don't come apart and now this is where the facing was folded back like that now all you have to do is flip this and voila you're going to have the back neckline coming out from between this and you're going to have a really clean finish super easy this is how the neckline looks inside this is the facing for the V and it'll just lie like this you don't have to tack it down or anything remember there's a bit of negative V's and everything so it's just going to lie super good on the body at the back I have my two layers like I wanted and everything's looking very neat this is my bodice with the two layers here on the back just one layer on the front the side seams are still not sewn and I want to sew them in a way that they will be enclosed and you can do that because you have three layers of fabric there this is the front this is the first layer of the back this is the second layer of the back I'm going to take that second layer of the back and just flip it out of the way and bring it up to the top and then bring it forward like this doing that now I'm going to align the three layers of the side seam and sew them and then when I turn it right sides out the side seam will be enclosed so I'll just show you what I've done again this is my front I have a single layer here and then I had two layers for the back this one and the second one that was here that second one has been pulled up this way and then flipped over like that and now we can align these side seams and sew them I'm sewing these side seams on the sewing machine it'll be less bulky than if I did it on the serger and I'm just using my quarter inch presser foot and a very shallow zigzag I like the sewing machine best because it's less bulky and this seam will be covered on the inside you won't see it so it doesn't need to be surged both side seams have been sewn and now I'm just going to take this layer and flip it 
and now you can see the front bodice it's a single layer and then that seam on the side is enclosed within the two layers of the back and it looks really neat I love that because it also will feel super nice on the body super nice and soft and smooth without a seam being in there and the seam that we've just done is just hiding in there it doesn't need to be finished so on the back where I have two layers I'm just going to pin that together and hand baste it so it acts as one piece now in the center front of the back I'm going to have a little bit of excess on the lining because I didn't make the pleats there I didn't want to do all the pleats again because they're not going to be seen inside you know what I'm just going to transform all this excess into one pleat there so much easier instead of the four tiny pleats I just have one pleat here on the inside it's not going to affect anything these are the two bands that will go beneath the bodice but before the skirt and I have my main one that will be on the outside made of the ITY and my inner layer that is made out of cotton spandex just firmer to give it a bit more structure the one that has this shape with a corner on the top is the one that goes on the front and on the back it's just got a different shape but it's also rounded I made sure to mark an arrow here when I was cutting my pieces to make sure I, this was the side that went on the top the one on the bottom is slightly more straight but it, you could easily get confused with the back shape here so mark your arrow when you're cutting your piece so that you know that the curved one goes on the top and the more straight one goes on the bottom so I have the same for both I've sewn the little side seams here a quarter of an inch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance on my sewing machine so it's less bulky and first I'm going to sew this layer onto the bodice and then I'll pin this one Basically these two are going to be enclosing the bodice and that will make that seam up there really nice and smooth as well. Here is my bodice, this is the front that I have here and I'm going to slide my bodice inside the waistband like this. The pointy bit of the waistband is what is going to go in the center front and that's why I left that part not sewn. The same quarter of an inch is just not sewn there. So I'm going to flip this and look at this this way. So I have the bodice here, I have the center front of the bodice and the pointy part of the waistband behind it. And I'm going to align this here at the point. You've seen me do something similar with waistbands on leggings and pants that have this type of V point. So I'm going to pin that right there and pretend that this is a little snip, but it's not. It's just that the seam allowance hasn't been sewn all the way down. And then we can align this here. I'm going to get the center V section out of the way first. And so about an inch there, pivot right there where that seam is and then keep going there and the V part will be done. And then I can just uh, align the rest, the side seams of the waistband with the side seams of the bodice and all the way around. But I'll get this part done first. I'm going to do this V part with a straight stitch so it's more accurate. I can see exactly where I have to sew, stop and pivot. That's how the V part looks and let's see it on the other side. So that's the center front seam and then this sh and then this waistband has that shape like that on the center. I think it looks pretty neat. Of course because it's a print you can't really see it but it's well sewn. <laughs> I've gone ahead and pinned the waistband all around the bottom of the bodice. This is what I've just sewn. At this point I, this is the bodice wrong side and I have the waistband inside. They are right sides together. And now having this pinned all the way around matching the side seams I'm going to take my inner waistband this is the front and I'm going to slide all of this inside this new waistband like this and I have the right side of the waistband against the wrong side of the bodice there meeting the point there I'm going to use the same pins I have here to pin this waistband on and then I'm going to have three layers here waistband the bodice and the other waistband there so basically the two waistbands are sandwiching the bodice okay I've taken my time to pin and I've got all the layers pinned together here you can see that red dot there that is exactly where I'm going to pivot and that matches exactly the point where I pivoted under there I made sure that that is very neat and I actually won't be removing my pin until the very last second and then I've just pinned everything there you can see the little pleats are in between both waistband pieces and I'll just flip this so you'll see what's going to happen. This is how it's going to look inside. The blue 
is going to be inside it's going to be clean and finished right there and the outside of the bodice will look like this it will have the main fabric there but the inner waistband will be a, a more structured one so that's how it's going to be so i'll just flip this back and sew it so again i have my inner waistband in this case i have a contrast fabric first the bodice and then i have my main waistband inside right sides together with the bodice this looks very neat I'm gonna go and give it a press I haven't pressed it so far now these bottom layers here will act as one when you are uniting to the skirt so all that needs to happen now is give this a good press and then gather the skirt onto here very easy and then the dress is done here is my beautiful dress I've been keeping this fabric for months and months and months on end it's a very lovely ITY very good quality compared to other ones that I've worked with stretchy but not that much and I know the print is wild and it's just harder to see the features but I just like sewing with prints you know there is the center front seam that is so neat and it makes the V super crisp there you can see it with my hand underneath so nice and so easy to sew the shoulder seam with the micro pleats there all the pleats are pointing towards this side and that side that's just the way I like the pleats it even says in the instructions you know just choose what way you want to fold the pleats and do them like that because you might want them to fold this way it's up to you <laughs> and it's so nice there is the waist piece that finishes in a point there in the center it's very neat I love how that turned out super pointy right there it's really nice a main fabric there and at the back we have a slightly curved bodice there that matches the curve of the waist piece right there the waistband so nice it fits so nice and the tiny pleats right there in the center back I think it's such a delicate detail I mean this is just amazing little pleats coming out from there as well a little bit fiddly let's be honest it took a little while maybe that's why I've just sewn one because I wanted to sew another one but I ran out of time so <laughs> very lovely and the gathered skirt that goes onto the spiders I mean the gathers are so subtle you can barely see them you know, if I had chosen a fabric that was slightly heavier, maybe an athletic knit, I would have sewn the skirt without the gathers. I would have used that option. But for rayon spandex or ITY, I think the gather skirt is very, very appropriate. At the back, there's also a bit of gathering there, but it's barely noticeable. What I'm mostly proud of is how this turns out inside. It's so pretty inside. This bodice, well, apart from being pretty it just feels amazing on when it's lined like this and when the seams are enclosed it just feels so nice on this is how the front bodice looks because there's only a single layer you can see the wrong side of the fabric the center seam how this facing finishes really neatly it's just folded there's no seam there that's what encloses this area it's so nice i've got my binding there to finish my armholes super neat there is a binding piece provided because a sleeveless option is official in this pattern I just adjusted the length to my new armhole because mine is slightly raised so yeah I just have to adjust that and here comes that waist piece and it's all enclosed there you can see the micro pleats coming from within the waistband layers the point there and at the back I've got a double layer that's why you can see the right side of the fabric here as well and instead of doing all those pleats again I just have one single pleat there to account for the excess there of the micro pleats don't need to do that inside because you won't see it now the back skirt well both pieces of the skirt are meant to be cut on the fold but me to save on fabric and I used every last little bit of my fabric I did add a center back seam to my skirt I don't mind that I just cut it and left a quarter of an inch away from the paper surged it and then just pretend that it was one piece I'll never be sad that I had to do that because it is acceptable to have a center back seam on a skirt <laughs> especially if it's going to allow me to do the project the front though that's that's cut on the forward and that's good I've done a twin needle hem such a beautiful project so fun to sew really really enjoyed it took my time did my very best and I love enjoying projects like that that just make you slow down of course there's always a time and place to sew faster makes 
that are also nice but just don't take that much effort. I'm gonna be honest, probably took all day to sew <laughs> just because I hand based, I do all those things. But you know, it is a really, really nice dress. Super worth it, the extra time it took, the lining, all those things. I'm very happy. Let's see it on. This is a full view of my Yasmin dress, size 16, tall file. It's made with ITY fabric and I've chosen above the knee length skirt. I really like this length, as you know, I wouldn't sew anything longer than this. <laughs> The skirt is super flowy. I chose the gathered skirt option onto this bodice. I really love how this looks. Up closer, you can see the neckline, the center front seam, this V neckline that is so easy to sew without facing. You don't need to worry about a neck band. And you can see the shape of this waist piece that goes above that skirt. It's so, so pretty on the front and the back, it's double layered there. And the layer inside has a structured knit to give more support to the skirt and to the bodice on this area. Up closer, you can see this V neckline. It's not deep, I'm not showing cleavage. And my sleeveless armhole is actually just the armhole that would have a sleeve. I just like more cover there. And I've raised my armhole slightly by an inch got binding inside and overall it was just a really really enjoyable project a lovely knit dress that looks amazing that feels amazing that is so comfortable and took a little while to sew but so worth it because of all the details it has it's just a really special dress I've shown you exactly how to fold those pleats and sew them. I would suggest hand basting down those pleats. The area there is really small and you have much more control of what you're doing than with the sewing machine. You know, the sewing machine might take apart one of your pleats, make it fold to the other side, make it stretch out that fabric. All things can happen with little tiny things like that. I hope this video was enjoyable. I hope you give a pattern like this a go. It does require a bit more of your time, a bit more patience with cutting, with preparing the, the pieces, all of that. But it's super, super worth it to have a dress like this. If you compare it to like just a t-shirt dress where it's just a few seams and you're done, I think these projects are way more satisfying. And you're still gonna wear them. They're still gonna be super comfortable because it's stretchy material. It's just gonna be super pretty. Don't forget that the Yasmin dress and other patterns are also 20% off at Sinclair's website. Go ahead and look and I will leave you my affiliate link down below. Remember Monday morning really early at dawn, the patterns switch to others. So if you don't want to miss out, just check before like Sunday night or something if you want to get your pattern. I will see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.